Nevada prison inmate Patrick McKenna has been called a real-life Hannibal Lecter. He spent 38 years in Nevada prison, 20 of them on death row. McKenna was a household name in Nevada many years ago, but he has shied away from any media contact lately, so his name doesn't strike fear like it once did. But he agreed to an on-camera interview with our own George Knapp, who has followed McKenna's case since the early 80s. It took us a long time, years in fact, to finally get permission to do this interview. Permission from McKenna himself and from prison officials concerned about letting anyone get close to him. We call him Nevada's most dangerous because that's the label he's carried for decades now. McKenna would certainly dispute its accuracy, but he doesn't deny a life of crime. He spoke to us about the incident that sealed his notoriety, the violent takeover in 1979 the Las Vegas jail. A siege at the Las Vegas city jail that started Saturday morning when some prisoners overpowered a guard and used his gun to hold him and two other guards hostage. The August 1979 takeover of the jail annex at Las Vegas City Hall made national news and it etched the name of inmate Patrick McKenna into the public mind. McKenna was already serving three life terms for sexual assault and was well known to police as a tough customer. The takeover was masterminded by two other inmates, Felix Lorenzo and Eugene Shaw who overpowered a corrections officer, broke into a gun locker, took two more officers hostage, then freed McKenna to help them. But the plot was discovered before they could escape, and the city jail was surrounded by hundreds of heavily armed police. From that point, it just became a question of surviving this thing and getting the hell out of here alive. Today, Patrick McKenna is considered a special risk and is kept in isolation at Nevada's maximum security prison near Ely. His involvement in the Las Vegas jail takeover, his daring escapes from other Nevada prisons, and his long history of serious crimes have elevated his stature as a dangerous man. A lot of it's just not true. Some of it is true. Uh, it's a mixture of, of this personal, this persona that's been created by some of the things I've done, and some of the things the DA has fabricated, the prosecutors over the years. And uh, it's a combination of all that. A little truth, a little not so true. The jail siege certainly qualifies as true. For 44 hours, the inmates held police at bay. Phone contact was made with a negotiating team headed by a young sergeant named Jerry Keller, who today is Clark County Sheriff. There was no consideration ever given to letting them out. We knew they weren't going anywhere. We had to bring successful resolution with the most lives saved in as expedient a process as possible. The inmates made grandiose demands at first, a helicopter to take him out of the country, money. As the hours dragged on, the demands lessened. The ringleaders wanted a neutral third party as negotiator. Keller made a call to a private defense attorney named Stu Bell, who today is Clark County District Attorney. It was a very dangerous situation. Our instructions were just kind of play along with them and say, hey, I don't make the decisions. I got to take it back to Keller. He'll tell you. But of course, we knew that the answer the next time we came back was no, there's no helicopter. And then, then they'd move to a car or a bus or something less. And pretty soon at the end, they just didn't want to get shot. And I would come from that direction. Inmates had asked for yet another negotiator to join in, this time KLAS News Director Bob Stodall. This is video of Stodall and Stu Bell returning from one negotiating session. They would talk to inmates on the second floor, then report to Keller and his team on the first floor. Stodall returned to the scene and recalled those tense moments. McKenna is in the middle. Um, and I believe Lorenzo was on the left and Shaw was on the right. And, and Lorenzo and Shaw were kind of, they were nervous and, and, and ducking down where, where McKenna sat and kind of got his spot. But I believe when it went bad, McKenna was smart enough to go to plan B. And his plan B was, I better resolve this somehow and make myself look good in the situation. But the problem, what happened, all hell broke loose. The siege at the jail ended in a bloody shootout. Strangely enough, Pat McKenna was one of the calmer voices during the takeover. Tonight at 6 o'clock, we'll show you why things went bad at the jail. We'll also look at McKenna's troubled life, his lengthy list of crimes, and some ideas on how he ended up this way. He's a, he's a criminal. He doesn't deny it, but he's a really interesting person. Yeah. And look at the police officers with the full battle regalia on there bringing him out. I mean, they don't take this guy. Yeah, there were, there were three of them in the room with us at all times. They were taking it very seriously, even though yeah. we're deep inside a maximum security prison. Thanks, George. Sure, sure. See you at six.